And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo, and we have a great show about Occupy Wall Street. I'm looking really forward to this show. It's going to be really interesting. We have Kane and Karanja with us. And uh, Joni, why welcome don't you to the uh, show. begin with the... Thank you. Thanks so much for coming down. It's an honor, and thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Well, it's just fascinating. It's been over two months now, right? They're in their second month. In our second month. Right, second down month. at Occupy Wall Street. First week of the second month. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, just let's get started with what's going on down there, what's going on all over the country. Although maybe I should, before we jump into that, explain what we were looking at a second ago, guys. Because oh, the video that we just saw. What's that all about? That's a sort of our new occasional opening here at Let Them Talk, and that was from the conflict at Times Square about two weekends ago when uh, police, for some reason, attempted to prevent people from crossing 46th Street and, and sort of attacked the the audience, the crowd that was there, and pushed them back, even though they weren't blocking the street really at that time. It really launched a, a confrontation that lasted for quite some time. People there, and a number of people were arrested, and that's some of the highlights from that confrontation. You could see pretty much all the elements of police repression, right? There was the horses, the, the metal rods that they hit people with, the nightsticks, they were banging on the fence, the helmets, it was just all there. Well, and don't forget the barricades, our favorite. Of course, <laughs> which are going up <laughs> How to cage place, people. And, and now are sort of like, many people are complaining about those barricades down there. Uh, folks are saying... Uh, well, it's interesting how they've used them, because they've used them both ways, right? To keep people out of things and to keep people from going into mm -hmm. something. So and maybe before we go into history, I could ask you a little bit about that, about about the, the neighbors, what, what's being done with Occupy Wall Street as far as making peace with Community Board 1 and the neighbors. Uh, to me, it seems pretty interesting. So, um, th yeah, the, vi the video is pretty much self-explanatory. That was, uh, that happened in Wall Street, um, in uh, Times Square, Times Square yeah. um, at the Global Day of Action. Uh, October 15th. October, on October 15th, uh, there were occupies right across the globe, and we wanted uh, the, the the movement wanted to really make a stand and 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 go out, um, you know, go out there and into the world. And 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 Times Square is is, is a well-known symbol mm -hmm. of New York, so it was a good place to to occupy. I'm just going to fix your mic here a little bit. That's all right. Just ignore me. As go you ahead. fix the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, there was um, 82 countries and 952 cities. Actually, it should be even more than that, had some form of action on that global day of action. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that includes my native uh, Nairobi and uh, Johannesburg, so I was very proud to learn of that. It, 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 it was great. Um, it, it, it was to be expected that police, of course, would be nervous. Um, I think what I'm seeing is the police um, <coughs> The police use of force and of barricades even is reducing. I think that the police even are understanding that being part of the 99% that perhaps it is uh, contrary to their own interests to be uh, so aggressive. I think they've recognized that we are a peaceful movement. We are a movement that is fighting uh, for the causes and for, 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 for just cause that includes them as well. Um, today we heard, for example, of reports in Albany and Austin, Texas, where uh, police uh, refused, well, in Albany, police uh, went counter to their orders to, um, you know, to be aggressive towards uh, protesters. We're a, we're, a, we're a peaceful movement. We're a, we're a, we're a movement that is... Uh, yes, explain that. It's happening in so many places. It's fascinating to me. Uh, what happened in Albany? What, what's been happening in Albany and what happened <coughs> in the last couple of days? It's so interesting. Well, police went, uh, pushed back against uh, the, the need for police use uh, uh, against protesters, arguing that a, they knew best. B, that protesters were being peaceful. Uh, Who was uh, ordering them? Who are these forces that are telling the police what to do and they don't want to do it? Well, from from what I read, it was uh, it, it was um, it was orders from from uh, politicians, uh, uh, specifically. If if I'm not mistaken, and you can fact check me on this, I I believe it was orders from the governor um, mm -hmm. that the police counted, saying that they knew better the use of uh, what the best use of police is. And pushing back against the idea that uh, uh, that these protesters were being disruptive, because in fact, the well, it, it, Governor that's, Cuomo that's personally ordering a, a pr oppression like over the, trying to go overrule the police's own opinion—that's uh, fascinating to me. Well, I think it's interesting too down at Wall Street. And tell me what you think about this. I wonder why do they need so many police there all the time if there aren't any crimes taking place? 
Well, two things. One, um, it's just, you know, a show of force is really a show of disdain for democracy. Um, because why else would you have to police people who are exhibiting civil disobedience? So to have so many police officers, and then you have more because they have like community fa affairs on Right, another of that. department of right, the police of department. The, of the police department, which sounds nice because, you know, they say, you know, uh, professionalism, courtesy and respect, I think, at the bottom, whatever it is. Yeah, Three CPR. Mm -hmm. CPR, mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, when's the last time you did that? I mean, I have footage of one gentleman, this is the day that Bloomberg came in mm -hmm. to, you know, clean us up, per se. I mean, which I find ironic because it's just like so many people in New York City right now in both private and public housing are living in m like r repugnant situations in terms of housing violations. Absolutely, We're talking yeah, rats, rats, roaches, holes in their ceiling, they're sleeping with the person's mattress from upstairs in their apartment, and that doesn't seem, I've, I've been to housing court, and I've seen mothers hold Polaroid pictures of, of like... Of terrible conditions. Thank you. Yeah. And Bloomberg has yet to do anything about that, but yet you know, our occupation is totally, completely unsanitary and, 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 and just needs to well, be... Well, now that you're on up. that topic yeah, about know, sanitation... And I can go back to the cops. I can go back to the No, but I, there, I wanted to mention about the kitchen because of, uh, two days ago when I was there, I looked up and I saw a, a sign on the kitchen that you'll see in r restaurants all over New York City. And what it was was the health inspection grade. Mm -hmm. And let's say they got an A, which is the <laughs> highest score you can get. So it kind of, I mean, there's restaurants all over New York that have B and C. Well, first of all, it's not a kitchen. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's food service. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a potluck, really. It's, so it's, it's not a kitchen. Um, it, it, it's tempting to leave the grade um, not talked about and, 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 and have it out there uh, as, 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 as what you, you say it was. Um, my understanding is, is that it was a prank. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but ironically, I went to Bloomberg, Bloomfields, excuse me, one okay. of Bloomfields' uh, huge developments today. Uh, by the way, uh, 1.6 million, if not, I think, million of dollars every year of our taxpayer money goes to developers for developers to then use. Um, use workers who don't have benefits and I think are 1. not. Billion. It is billion. I, I thought it was billion. I, I spoke at four of It's uh, way too low. It's way too small. Yeah, exactly. Now it's billionaire. It was billion, but you know, it's like you have to stop yourself. It's like you can hardly believe yeah, it. Yeah, this is absolute insanity. Like the New York City public school budget is over $22 billion a year and still has 50, at least 50% um, uh, not graduating from high school. So these are just, you know, facts. So you're a New Yorker. Yes, I am a New Yorker. But Bloomfield today, I went in there and all these luxury um, restaurants, they have great pending. Which is not a good sign. Yeah. Because that means they didn't pass the first inspection mm -hmm. and they're coming back to give them a second chance. And, so and this is, you know, one of these luxury buildings with all these, Right, you know, so we're talking about sanitation, cleanliness. The fire department was saying something in the newspaper, it was printed in the newspaper today that they're worried about it being a fire hazard. What, what, is go what, what is the living circumstances? How long can this, can this continue on Occupy Wall Street? How realistically long can, uh, well can this continue? Winter time, they're saying winter, the first winter storm will chase people out. We've, we've been blessed, we've had wonderful weather. Uh, hopefully the it'll continue. There's no, there's no exit strategy from uh, Occupy Wall Street, uh, first of all. Um, and, and, and I do believe, I do trust that the movement will continue physically or not physically in, in, in Liberty Plaza, um, the, the occupation and the, and the movement will continue. Um, but uh, as, as far as Liberty Plaza, there is no exit strategy. So there, 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 is no, there are no plans to exit. So it's the, the plan is to continue to occupy. Um, I don't believe that the occupiers are fair weather occupiers, and um, you know, um, can I can 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 well attest to what most people have seen is you know we have a library which is very so set great. In place. Yeah. Uh, we have we have a working community. And you seem to be prepared for different weather possibilities down yeah. there. I mean, they have tarps. There's more and more tents, I notice. Mm -hmm. By the way, we do have the phone number on the screen right now, and if folks want to call in and ask questions to Kanae and Karanja, uh, they're really uh, invited to do so and to, uh, 
Uh, if you have questions about what's happening at Occupy Wall Street, yeah, we'll call take us your up. calls. Call us up and we'll take your calls. They're right here. Remember, there's an eight second delay, so really you have to turn your TV down once we pick up the phone. Right, otherwise, right? it's totally and confusing. And don't look at the TV. <laughs> and, and our number's there on the screen, 212 uh, 757 1538. So we hope you get a call and we'll take that call. So uh, anyway, let's continue on. Um, uh, very interesting uh, the demands. What, what is this whole issue where the me media is constantly, are they still, you're the media representatives, you're representing, uh, do you still get that question, what are your demands, and why don't you have a demand? We get that question on a constant basis. I think that the media does not know what to make of us. The, 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 the regular, um, I, I don't want to use an overused phrase, the mainstream media. Um, Which it is. is. <laughs> but it is, it's overused for a reason. But it's hard not to. They're, they're not able to understand the concept, uh, they don't understand us. And so they need to put us in a box. And sure. so they need in to In a recognizable form. Correct. Which, it, that's to me one of the most interesting things is that it's hard for people to pigeonhole this movement. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and h if you can't pigeonhole it, you can't describe it, you sort of have to actually go down and experience it over a period of time. Absolutely. So that's what we encourage people to do. We encourage people to go to OccupyWallStreet.org, and that's OccupyWallSD.org, uh, find out for themselves. We encourage people to come down to Liberty Square, Liberty Plaza. Liberty Park. <laughs> <laughs> Plaza, Park, Square. <laughs> liberty, though, the key, yeah. the key, the key is, is liberty. liberty. Right. Um, right. Because, uh, you know, we are shifting, we are shifting sensibilities. It's, it's about a paradigm shift. It's not about making demands so that we can get a couple of tokens sort of here. And then uh, move on. You know, takes on, 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 on some politicians' uh, notch of, right. of, of, of whatever and Have the and Democrats been moving in on you guys? Have been trying to take, I mean, I see a lot of Democratic politicians, and what's your reaction to the Democratic Party showing up and sort of trying to co-opt the movement in any way? Um, we, we, we're not open for co-option. Um, both parties are parties that uh, both belong to a system that is broken. Uh, it is a system that is not functioning. That's why people are the way, you know, people are as, um, pe people who have come out to express themselves because the system that we had in place has not, is not a system that, um, that functions in a way to um, take into consideration people's um, humanity, you know, the human side. It is well, do you think that the common factor is dissatisfaction? I mean, would that be the most common thing across the board? Because people have so many issues. It's very complex. A lot of the issues are intertwined. Mm -hmm. um, a few things. One, uh, the media is, is, we defer our power to the media. We are, we are, we are the story. <laughs> they have to come to us. But if they distort the information with disinformation and they discredit us and delegitimize us, we have the tools. We have phones that have cameras. We have internet connections. We have the tool. We are the media. We can tell and be the story simultaneously. And that's a way in which, you know, we can then have the movement be crafted in a way that fits our point of view, um, from our point of view. So I think that that's crucial. Um, in terms of uh, what was your second question? Oh, um, about the uh, dissatisfaction? Is oh, that the, the common factor? Yeah, because people say, oh, what are your demands? Oh, what are your demands? Because that's an easy way of saying, um, what, if we just give demands, then boom, the story's over. Okay, so now the story moves from, you know, right, here's who, your playground who we are and what we're is, doing right. to, oh, this is their list of demands, and they're going to just check them off like tally marks, like, yes, no, yes, no. So that's why, no, that's one reason why, no, why give demands, you know? We have a process which is called consensus, where we, we engage in everyone's voice. And yeah, we power explain how everybody. that works in a practical sense, yeah, because I think it's voice. very hard for people to understand what does that mean, consensus, does it mean everybody agrees? How do you get to that well, point? So, so an issue is brought to the floor okay. of the general consensus. And so, you know, and then it's quote unquote voted on. So the way it's done is if someone, if people, in, you know, they in agree with it, they go like this. Right, there's a whole set of hand symbols. Yes. Yeah. you know, and then if not, you know, you could also block. If one person blocks an agenda item, then it has to go back in for renegotiation. And so that's how consensus works, whereby if something isn't blocked, then it's a go. 
Right, for example, the Occupy Wall Street people endorsed the March Against Police Brutality on the 22nd. And I attended that march. Which was great because it, it was the biggest one I've seen in years. And actually the irony of it is that for, let's say, 500, 600, maybe 700 people who attended, there was way more cops. I mean, I've never Again, seen yeah, outnumbered by the police. that much police. And I have footage of that where I would actually show, like, you know what? This isn't the biggest attended march in, in New York City history, but this is disproportionate to the amount of cops that I see. Do you it think this police cops. presence endangers the rest of the city in terms of crime? Like, has there been a spike in crime in other areas of the city because so many police are down there? Do, or do you know that? Or? Well, I say that we... Um, we are being the change that we want to see happen in the world. So they should take um, steps from us. We have a system in place whereby we are addressing human needs. If human needs are addressed, they're less likely to commit a crime. And so the police are like doing this whole brain drain or police drain and, and focusing all of their energies on us. Well, maybe also they need to focus more energy in giving people, jobs, other services, other things that they can do. Because right now, the only jobs that are being created are jobs for cops. <laughs> They're doing overtime. But there's still a large majority of people in New York City who still aren't getting their needs addressed. And that has nothing to do with a cop on every block. Right. The crime no, basic human yeah, needs you're crime doesn't about, happen right. because a cop is or isn't on the block. A lot of times crimes happen because people find themselves in situations for which they see no so no no positive solution and or and they have no outlet, they have no voice. Speaking of the police, I have another minute or so of film footage. Maybe we'll take a little break and watch uh, some of this uh, material which I find very interesting and which was recorded also in Times Square where there was a lot of this type of police activity. So we're gonna take a look at that now. Sure. Joan Moosey, our guest, Kane uh, and Karanja from Occupy Wall Street, the press office, who were gracious enough to come on very short notice to, uh, to discuss with us what's been happening there at Occupy Wall Street. So we've been having a great conversation, and uh, so we would like to uh, continue that by uh, asking you, um, well, why do you think the, uh, it's interesting, the change of the police, because they were very, used a lot of violence to try and stop this from happening, and then have become sort of more in the background. I mean, they're there, lots of them, but... They're watching. What, 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 you guys had some political support. Where did that political support come from? With, without a question, the, 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 the police, the, uh, the, the video we showed that, we, you, that you just showed there, um, sh uh, it's showing police um, being brutal. Uh, right. There's no other word for it. That's right. police brutality. Um, I do think that, the, the, that there has been a shift. Uh, I think even at, at uh, Liberty, Park. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be corrected back here again. <laughs> At Liberty Park, there are there is less police presence, and uh, and going back to to the barriers, the barriers, uh, the uh, the community board actually demanded that the barriers be moved because uh, the, it, it's disruptive to businesses, it's disrupt right. disruptive to the people living there as well. So it, it, it not only was it work, you know, disruptive toward us, the occupiers and, and the residents at Liberty Square, uh, Liberty Park, 
um, but to the local residents as well. And um, there is support from the community. I'm, I'm not sure that we have political support. I think what we have is public support. It is growing. It is uh, up to this, uh, above the 60, uh, you know, uh, 7 in, in 10 um, support in New York and, and growing across mm -hmm. the country. So it's not that we have political support, it's that we have um, grassroots support. support. Grassroots yeah. support. Since you brought up political support, when I watch the, the conservative Republican crazy talk shows every Sunday, the, the Herman Cain's of the world and the, and the Palin's and the rest of them are always saying the difference between the Tea Party and what the Occupy Wall Street doing is that people are doing is that the Tea Party turn their numbers into political power. I mean, is that is that really well, even the goal of the Occupy Wall Street? Exactly, because again, that's that, that's still within the old paradigm, and we're shifting to an entirely different paradigm, and that's part of the reason why it's like, well, demand, you know, just come out with demand, and it's just like when we concretely say what we have to say, it's gonna like. It's going to be totally, it, you can't even fathom in words, you know what I'm saying? This has nothing to do with your political system. This has nothing to do with, you know, keeping our heads above water, you know. Um, this has to do with the rising tide of prosperity for the 99%, which neither the Democrats or the Republicans are capable or willing of doing. I mean, you know, unfortunately, people are afraid to crit critique Obama because, you know, we have this special place in our heart for him. He's been bombing you know, Pakistan with unmanned drones since like week one of his presidency. Well, so it was interesting because his campaign was so much co-opting the peace movement. Yes. And so that's change, why this is so interesting is, is as soon as you get inspiration in, a, in numbers, I mean, that's when the other political parties come in. And there have been a lot of political parties down at Occupy Wall Street, including the socialists, the, every different communist group, mm -hmm. you know. If so they see the numbers and they're hoping to convince people to their way, exactly. Yeah, if I can jump on, on this, I, I, I think, uh, first of all, I would say Herman Who. Um, Herman Who. Uh, Herman Who, Sarah Who. Um, you know, because Herman Cain. <laughs> <laughs> he said that we are jealous of people driving in Cadillacs because we are sleeping in sleeping bags. Precisely. Herman, Herman Cain. Herman I Who. hate Cadillacs. I mean, they're fun to drive. I them. like them. <laughs> He's out of touch. He's out of touch. totally <laughs> disgusting to the environment. I mean, they're against everything I believe in, except for maybe if I'm hitchhiking Except comfort. Somewhere. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'll give them that. They're very comfortable. They're extremely <laughs> comfortable. They're part of the American dream. Right. Um, but, but, you know, this... this, this I, I think what happened is, uh, you, you know, we, we, we have a, 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 a single party divided into two factions that uh, we have one um, that, that pays a lot of lip service to the, the, to the things that people want to see changed. And I think that people had a lot of hope right. um, when, you know, during this last um, presidential cycle that um, you know that that our current president uh, as a candidate was was really expressing this and I think that people were expecting to see that change and I think that people were patient and gave him two one two three years to start to see that change and I think that what Occupy Wall Street is born of the movement not just Liberty Square or Liberty Park but the whole movement what is what it is born of is the dissatisfaction with, um, with with the fact that this system clearly is not able to address, and I think that many people perhaps feel there are many within um, I'm sure uh, that are supportive, uh, if not necessarily uh, within Liberty Square or within the movement, that do I think uh, grant uh, the goodwill that this person, you know, that, that our current president perhaps had the intention of changing this, but they question either. The, the the commitment of, of of this party that has you know the Democrats have been paying lip service mm -hmm. to to these issues and they so have they get most of their money from Goldman Sachs it turns out oh. I mean, that's the number one contributor to Pre the Democratic Party precisely and so <laughs> and so we see the lack of uh, we see the lack of, of of any prosecutions or any serious um, and bailouts of banks that then turn around and cause foreclosures there were over yeah. two hundred and fourteen thousand foreclosures in September alone, over 680,000 over the last, the, the third quarter of this year. So, what, in a few minutes we have left, a couple minutes. What, what, do we, what can we see uh, in the future days and weeks at Occupy Wall Street? Continued growth. I, I, mm -hmm. I would say. I mean, um, I think the, the the power of our movement is in uh, stopping dissonance. We in America are 
trying to be sane in an insane world. And that has got to stop. And we're, we're caught up in the trappings of, of middle class or lower middle class existence. And we, we think that we, if we work a little harder, you know, if we say yes a, a few more times, then we're gonna get it, whatever it is. It could be the self, the newest cell phone, it could be the newest sneaker, it can be the newest car. But people are starting to realize this rat race, no, there's no more need for this rat race. I want real things like health care. I want to know that I can have healthy food on my plate and have a healthy body to go along with that. I can do that. I can afford that. They want to know that they can go to a college, get an education, serve their community, and while they're serving their community, they're happily serving because they know that they're not rattled with debt coming out of school would, would change, literally change. Exactly. And I'm so this, this movement is about awareness. It's breaking people out of their patterns of acceptance and maintaining mediocrity. This is for your highest potentiality. That's what this movement is. It's a cross-pollination to a new nation. We're sowing seeds for a new society. One minute to go. What's your, your final message to viewers in New York City? Uh, it, it really not much to add to what Kine said. I think she, she really said it all. It, but um, but, but <laughs> uh, That's a symbol of you like what was being said. That, oh, that right. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> you know, um, the General it, Assembly. It, it is absolutely about changing sensibilities. We've, we've lived for far too long, especially the last 30 years, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment and, and an economy that was driven purely for profit alone with the, uh, you know and and more and more so to the exclusion of 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 a need for a human um dynamic to 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 work to to existence you know uh kids graduating out of college with mortgage worth right. of of, <laughs> of student that's loans that's you know 200, 200 right. 000, 20 that's seconds house. what uh, what should people be doing now what should we be thinking about um Definitely, first of all, visit OccupyWallSD.org and uh, come down. And to if Zuccotti you're in Park. New York, yeah, come to Zuccotti Park. Get on the Park, subway right? and come on right down to Zuccotti Park. All right, we'll Don't see you. Don't believe the media. All right, thank you very <laughs> much, Come down everybody. for yourself. And we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot for joining us on Let Them Talk. Thank yeah, you. thanks so much.